Today, we're gonna to look into sales techniques and how they can be used against us. Now, we're gonna look at a few different phrases, words, things like that that are used, and we're looking at three specific areas or groups of people today that use sales tactics against us. They are leadership and anybody in those groups, um, authoritative bodies, mainstream media, and we're gonna have a little bonus section at the end looking at investment and crypto sales. And I'm gonna give you all of my experience, all of the knowledge that I have from what I'm seeing, share it with you so you can be aware of sales tactics being used against you. Firstly, I wanna thank the members who have sent in messages and have been kindly reminding me, and I do mean that kindly, to get this second part of sales techniques used against us out to people. So I really do appreciate you. I want to say a big thank you as always to all of the community members at Open Media One channel on Telegram, all of the subscribers here on YouTube, all of the members on all the channels and chats over on Telegram and all of the teams and the owners over there. We're all doing a great job sharing each other and helping each other. So well done to all the goodies out there. The next part of this will be some slides, just a few. They're going to contain keywords, trigger words, phrases, even colours that we're going to look into. And I want you to remember what you're seeing. I'm going to have some music playing alongside it. It's only going to take about half a minute to a minute, but it's vital, absolutely vital for when we're looking into stories, what leaders have said, what mainstream have said, and of course, what investment and crypto people say. So do me a favour. Please take your time to look at these words that are coming up now. There'll be music alongside and I'll be back with you uh, in a moment. So I hope you've all got all those words noted in your brain, all the phrases and everything, and let's begin. We're gonna begin with colors, guys. So let's take a look at these slides right now. Okay, did a quick internet search as usual, and colors that help with sales or messages. So just had a quick look here. Now, what color works best for sales? Red is more effective for impulse purchases. So it's a common buy button choice on e-commerce websites but it's more effective for business-to-business -business software vendors too. When HubSpot AB tested CTA button color for performable, red out converted green by 21%. Red seems to be the one that performs the best across the board. Red is more effective for impulse purchases. Okay, that's what it says there now. As you can see, I've crossed that out. Red is more effective for impulse decisions because it's not just purchases guys that people are doing it's decisions it's many different forms of um, advertising sales pitching you know trying to get you to take some on board think something do something it's everywhere so we're going to look at that today but remember remember what it just said there about red being a color that makes you act on impulse okay because we're going to have a look at that in just a moment now, quickly before we get into the leaders mainstream investment and crypto sales and all the pitches they use i just want to quickly bring your attention to a post that we did on open media one channel over on telegram so we'll take a quick look at that and it was teach your kids about tv advertising it was to teach them about media and corporations doing the same kind of things to get you to buy their message so basically what i did with one of my uh, lads when he was younger and i did it with um, all of them now but um one of them was to just teach him teach him about advertising teach him about colors teach him about things like that teach him about why certain adverts certain things certain toys um are attracted to him more because of what he's seeing in uh, in that in those times you know a few years back it was on the tv mostly teaching him about the advertising the colors the things like that um was very important and it also helped them as they were growing up i mean they're, they're still lads now obviously some of them um <laughs> apart from the older ones but um 
you know, you've teaching them about what's being pushed into them at an early age is a good idea. So, um, you know, I explained that it was all done in the same way. There's trigger words, things to make you react, take action, buy whatever they are selling. And I do that, I get them to show me when they see something like this on YouTube, TV or anything, and it really does work. And, you know, even my younger one at the moment, he, he he's literally going, oh, look, they're trying to sell, to, to sell this to me, sell that to me. And it is, it's certain toys, they're looking at stuff like that. So it's helpful, guys. I mean, it helps me, it helps other people. So there's a little suggestion for you there. Now we go over to look at the mainstream, exactly the same. We're looking for keywords, trigger words, colors, all sorts of things like that. So remember this guys, these are all little tips and I want you to keep your eyes out for this going forward. Now, as you can see, this particular article has not aged well at all. Now that's because we do know now there are far more than 6 million unvaccinated in the UK. I'm actually gonna bring you to another article which is more recent than this um in a moment to look at some other angles so we will look at that for this particular article it was put out in da, 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 december okay and let me just scroll up december the 7th there so sorry i had to enlarge it on my copy of this what do we see here guys we see the big red headline as many as six million eligible britons may not have had a covid jab who are they Take a look at all of that. You've got that word eligible in there again. That word makes you feel inclusive. It makes you feel all oh, entitled, special. They're putting it in there in a way. Uh, it's not reverse psychology, but it is. How can I say this? It is kind of um, a seed plant or something they're trying to do there. They're trying to hit on your emotions. There's six million of you that are eligible and you haven't had it yet. Why not? And they put all of that into that sentence. And if you look at it, they're using the red dye the red color again that impulse we've already saw that i mean that that's on the internet you can see that yourself so that's what they're using in the red the red part let's take a quick more uh, another little dip into this here now so looking at here who are they that makes you feel like oh gosh they're gonna come for me that you know i'm eligible i haven't taken it so there's a lot of sales stuff a lot of tactics in there again this is just one article from december i want to quickly show you now Another article from the exact same newspaper in the UK, The Guardian. Now, this is, as you can see on the screen, Federal Reserve announces biggest interest, interest rate hike since 2000. That's pretty big news, people, no? Pretty big news. Should that be in red? Should we have that in red? Would that make people impulse then? Would that make people agitated towards that story? Is that not what they're doing here? You see where I'm going with this so far? Stick with me on this, guys. We've got another mainstream media article to look at here. I'm going to give you loads of details for this, so please do stick to the end on this. There's going to be a lot covered. And the investment sales one is actually the largest part of this, so do stay tuned for that. Now, getting over here. So looking at this other article here, we're going to go straight into the mail online now. We actually posted this on Open Media uh open media one channel on telegram and we had lots of uh, responses to this lots of chats this is a genuine article as with everything i'm showing you here even the black headlined guardian article i will give you the links okay in the description so don't worry you can check everything for yourself these are genuine screenshots and we're just looking at certain things so let's take a look at this guys Revealed fewer than half of people living in parts of London, Birmingham and Leeds have had their first COVID vaccine. So use our search tool to find out how many people have been jabbed in your area. The guys, there is a lot in this, a lot in this. So we're going to take it step by step. If you look at that first line, half, half is massive. It's huge. They're not using any of these things as a good uh, a good way. Hey, everybody, half the people aren't jabbed. They're using it in a way to try and entice those people to get in. Big, massive half. Fewer than half of people living in parts of London, Birmingham, Leeds have had their first COVID vaccine. Thing is, when it comes to this, from my opinion, anyone who hadn't had it at this point, any point at all, 
you're rarely going to get them anyway. But let's let's dive into this to see all the different sales tactics that they just use in the mainstream. Use that search tool to find out how many people have been jabbed in your area. Interesting. Look how big your is there. So we've circled half. We've got your underlined as well. Let's move on to the next bit. More than nine in 10 people aged 12 and over have had their first dose across the UK. That is a big statistic there, people. More than nine in 10 people. More than 90% of people aged over 12 and over have had their first dose across the UK. We'll keep our eye on that one anyway, um, because as we've seen in the past, these people are putting out headlines a few months later, totally refuted you know, by sometimes themselves as well. So we'll keep our eyes on that one. Um, but again, it's a sales tactic here. It's used to put into the mind of the reader or the person that they're selling to, they're selling this information, promoting it. 90%, more than 90%, more than nine in 10. What's more than nine and 10? Nine and a half, 10? Do you see what I mean? And they're not hitting 10 because that would be 100%. And people would know for a fact that they know people that aren't. So they've got to be clever with this. They've got to play with the truth. They manipulate numbers that we're going to go into as well. So, And we already saw at the beginning. So please do bear all this in mind. I hope I'm not going too fast with you on this. Now, next one. This bottom line. Oh, this is good. We've got a couple here. So the first one, nice and simple. Experts said disappointing data shows vaccine strategy did persuade most deprived areas to come forward. So even though they're not happy with the data... Um, they're still putting that line in because it, you know, it's not the greatest data for them, but it did persuade most deprived areas to come forward. Again, that's making you feel left out. That's making you think, oh, should I go and get it now? That's what that does. Pure sales. This next one's quite funny, guys. Well, I think it is anyway. They were that disheartened by it. They even threw in a parent disappointment tone. I couldn't believe it. Experts said disappointing data. Now, before we actually get into this bonus part, I do need to read some out to you guys. Don't worry, it's not a disclaimer or anything like that. It's just to do with how I feel I am of not authority, but I have the experience in order to do a comparison with the investment. So please do bear with me on this as I read this out, okay? Now, everything I've said over the past two years is fully recorded. When this nonsense started, I believed it. I was signing up for supermarket jobs, telling them I didn't care about catching it. I just wanted to help. On my Twitter, which I got banned from in the end, my first message was sorry to everyone I ever hurt. I was serious and I made a vow to myself that I'm going to do all I can to help others. For me, it was everything could hit the fan and it was real. So I wanted to do it like nothing I'd ever done before. Now, I'm not sure if Elon Musk could free up my old uh, uh, Twitter account or not, so you could see for yourself. But if anyone wanted to look, and you can trace those messages, the address was at Matt Matt with two T's, 2020, 20, and then a one. Now, I was full on believing in this nonsense for three weeks. I oh, know, three weeks. Like I say, I walked outside after three weeks. There was nothing happening, what they were saying um, and what we were seeing. So I started to switch very, very quickly. I looked into things. If anyone can see stuff from that Twitter account, um, please don't judge me. I was a lot more activist on there. I wasn't doing this to, you know, in a group way or trying to help people. It was just my personal one. Um, I did get some great impressions on there, retweets and all that. I was shadow banned, seriously shadow banned for a long time. And then I got banned proper, I got back banned, suspended, all that stuff. And then I got banned for good. But the reason I'm talking about that now is because I was raw on there. It was totally me just going for it in lots of different ways, but it proves 100% that I'm genuine and that I do want to help and all I'm saying is true. And as soon as I thought to myself, someone not right with this, bang, I used everything I could to try and help others. My, my financial skills, my, my um, numbers, you know, everything, guys, I really did. And I pumped that all out on Twitter and then I got banned. Then I moved to Telegram. I was already on Telegram anyway for my work, so I just set up a community channel there. That's been there since January 2021. So all of my claims, everything that I've ever done, everything I've ever said throughout this is available to see. And that's why I'm telling you this now. Also, I have a YouTube now and I also run a free crypto group for people. So everything's recorded, every post I've done on the crypto group, everything. Now, this is important for you to know that I have a crypto group because I'm not just mouthing off here like I have no experience. I've got sales experience, financial experience and I run my own free crypto group. So I do think I'm very uh, experienced enough to have to form an opinion um, that other people could take. So I do think 
am experienced enough to give an opinion um, on these people that are using these sales tactics. Please remember that as well as we go forward. And I will send details out at the end, guys, of my free group. It is free. Um, all details will be on the end of that anyway. So if you wanted to compare as well and go, hold on a minute, look at these guys over there and look at what this guy's been doing. So you can compare yourselves as well. So this part, everyone, might get a bit fast at times. I am literally going to read through um, what I put together from watching a lot of the podcasts, the vids, having people directly market me and try to sell to me over the last week, really, over the last week. This is where I've gleaned all of this from. So bear with me. I'm going to read it down. And it's basically going to be, I've got all my notes here. It's basically going to be all the bits that they will say to you in a big picture. This could be on a podcast. This could be on a vid. This could be on a message. This could be on an email. This could be on a, a Zoom call. This could be uh, on a phone call, you know. So these are the things that are usually said in the pitches. And I'll let you know reasons why as we go through as well. And as always, please leave me your feedback on this. So let's begin. So we start at the top. Anyone who is saying secret intel, insider information, best kept secret, top info, are all red flags. Anyone with info that's secret and that good would not have time to send out vids, emails, messages all day telling everyone else about it. They would be planning on spending their money and spending their money. Big red flag they are everyone. So any inside information, clubs, anything like that at all, red flag. Okay. Now, watch yourselves guys for these reverse psychology seeds. Okay. They say they don't want something a few times, maybe even once, and then they're going to ask for what they want. But now your brain is comfortable, it's receptive, it's softer. Your initial guard's down because they said to you at the start, they don't want something from you at all. Um, and then they just go in and picture their product or what they want. So do be aware of that. Please be aware of these reverse psychology seeds that are put in. They'll say something first and it puts you off guard. You don't even think about it, it's subconscious, and then boom, they're going to hit you with a sales question. Boom, another sales question, and you are more likely to say yes. So bear with me, we've got a lot to get through on this part, guys. Now, I don't want your money. Then, later on in the conversation, they're asking you to join for a membership, to buy a deal, any variation of that. That soft story again. We don't want your money. I don't want your money. What happens in your brain? You're like, oh, brilliant. Receptive. I'm open. It's an old, old style sales tactic, old style sales tactic. Anyone who says I don't want your money and isn't giving you everything for free, they're just not being truthful, are they? So someone says I don't want your money, they're softening you up generally. Later on, if you get hit with a membership or a deal or a fee or anything like that, it's exactly what I'm saying here. They're just using it as a softening blow. Let's carry on, guys. Now, this is a big one. Them getting you to say yes to other things. This is conditioning, guys. It's called the yes game. I don't know if other people call it anything else. It, the idea is to get many yeses from you. So when they ask you a question, which is a selling question, are you going to buy this? Are you going to do this? They don't usually say, are you going to do this? They don't usually say that. They usually lead you up to that. You are more likely to say yes because of all the yeses you have said already. I know it sounds out there to some people who have never known anything about this, but it's a fact. It actually works as well. People keep saying yes, 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 yes. When it's the point of time to sign up here, guys, a lot more people are going to sign up because they've already said yes. Some people will even feel uncomfortable saying no at that point because they've said yes so many times. Remember, these guys, a lot of these people are pretending to be your friend because they want your money. It's that simple. Let's keep going. Big sales words big massive words that make your brain go oh, oh this is a big game changer this is a big game changer this is going to be the biggest thing ever absolutely the best thing you've ever seen nothing's like this nothing's like this you would have wished you got in earlier any huge statements like that are huge red 
flags, guys. Again, revert back to the earlier bit. If it was that good, why are they on the phone telling you or on the screen telling you? Think about that. But let's keep going again. I'm going to be saying that a lot through this. Now, we go a bit deeper on this one, guys. Third party stories. Be very careful of these. Third party stories are a very good sales tool because what it does, it allows them to tell you a story and to put the parts in that story which they need to use to sell you the product, the service, the information, whatever it is they're, they're getting through to you, okay? Third party stories are, be very, very careful of them. Um, your natural mental defense falls down, generally it does, because you're not thinking you're being sold to, are you? You're listening to a story about someone else, and in that, more often than not, there'll be a story about a guy that he knew, that got in at this price and ended up selling at that price. He bought the house at this price and sold it at that price. He bought the crypto at this price and sold it at that price. Always for a third party story. These are red flags, people. Red flags. It is a sales tactic. Absolutely sales tactic. And it's done to soften you up, as always, to go for the kill, to go for the sale. That's what they're looking to do. Let's keep going. Now, you can get third party story facts. So what happens here is that it's not usually a made up story here about a friend or somebody else. It could be, for example, the old one that used to be used quite a lot in sales industries, in investment sales industries was Microsoft had the most secretaries who were millionaires. Um, you've probably all heard that one. You know, imagine speaking to a secretary over the phone saying that she's going to be like, wow, I am going to. And it's automatically done. It's a third party story, but it's a true fact. Still, they are still sowing the seeds. So they're going to mix it up. They're going to mix it up with third party stories of people they know. Third party stories of actual real facts as well. So look out for those also. Big numbers, huge numbers, millions, billions, thousands, hundreds of thousands. Telling you a story about this guy down here, normal Joe Bloggs, he lives a general guy down the street, just down there he made this. It goes all the way up to the billions of stories. This guy made this, this guy made millions. All red flags, all red flags. They're just stories again, third party stories to promote, but these are the real ones where they're getting into the nitty gritty now. If you've got to the stage of the call where you're still on the phone and they're starting to get big numbers, you know they are hotting up as well. So look out for that guys. When they're doing that as well, there's not usually not much reference to the product they're pitching. I mean, you might have heard it a couple of times at this stage, you might not. But at this stage, it's all about selling to you, selling them to you, selling that they know more than you, selling that they have the goods that you need. That's what it's all about here. But let's keep looking into the different things that are going to go on for here. We're not finished yet, people. Now, we are long term. We are long term. Oh, my Lord. We are long term. Always be cautious of that. If you've got this far and they've said all of these tactics, they've been getting you to say yes, yes, yes. They've been conditioning you to um, think about third party stories of fantastic people that could be their mate down the road that have earned this, that and the other. Right the way up to billionaires who have made loads and loads from it. They've really hit you hard. Now, we're at this stage. We're long term. I don't think so. Again, they're spending all this time trying to get you to buy something. It's not a very good idea, whatever they've got. I wouldn't have said. I mean, I'm not saying that about everybody, but usually if you've got this far and you've had this many red flags, it's just red flags from here on in. So we are long term. Always be cautious of this. They could be getting you to buy something and they could be selling it. You ever heard of that? Oh, look how good this is. Look how good this is. You lot all buy it and you're buying it from there and they're out the door. They've passed it on to you. And that can happen with deals, houses, property, money and crypto. <laughs> do you get what I mean? So do take a look out for that. The long term, I'd be looking at that person thinking straight away, hmm, are you a weekly trader, a day trader, a month trader? I mean, what are you? Because you, you, you keep mentioning that word long term. You've said it five times, you said this time. And that's another thing. Look out for repetition. How many times do they say these red flags? How many times are they saying sales buzzwords? How many times does that keep repeating over and over? Because if it does, you're on that Ferris wheel. They're going to come and get you. That's what they're trying to do anyway. Well, everyone, this is the stage of the call, the vid, the podcast or whatever you're in, where they are absolutely going to be going for the close in a moment. So we're going to go through that just to let you know, they'll probably recap on a few different points, the key points, the big points, the billions, the this, the that, the other. Make sure that you're so softened that you're more likely to say, yeah, that's the reason for that. That's why they do that. 
Now here's what happens at this point. You might get a pre-invitation. You might be told your pre-invitation. You'll be a VIP member. You'll be invited into the investor club. You're eligible for a deal or you're eligible for a membership. It's that eligible word again. That's the final soft thing to do. They go, it's like a, if I could, would you? You know, uh, if I could get you into the investor club, if I could get you into this deal, would you? Would you do it if I could do it? That same thing, it's conditioning. You're right for this moment now. And this is where it comes in. They're going to go into the details of what they're selling you. They're going to recap. They're going to go for the more figures. The same works for all deals, for cryptos, for memberships, everything. They'll go through the details of the actual deal further, what you need to do, um, all big buzz points. They may say words like vital, I'll coach you, I'll hold your hand, step by step, we'll make you a pro. All red flags, all red flags. Their backup pitches will be flying at this point. It's time to be a winner. I do this long term, I'll come back in again. Don't sit on the fence, be a player. Don't sit and wait around forever person. They don't make money, so on, so on. You know, all of these things are designed to clean any final doubts that you have out of your mind. That's what they are. They're a tactic, 100%. They sound assertive. They sound confident. They sound full of facts. And you've listened to them for so long now that your brain is very conditioned towards the point of sale. They'll give you the details again on how to buy. If they've gone through all of this to get to this point, I'd really be, you know, thinking it'd be a thousand dollar plus deal, thousand pound plus deal that they're trying to sell you. And that's how they close you. They might even add some things in at the end as well. There's only a certain amount of time for this. We've only got a certain amount of places, you know, we're turning people down. Might be a few little ones at the end there, but you have literally just sat through their whole pitch and they have hammered you, hammered you with all of these sales tactics that I've just taught you there. And again, this is about investment. This is about crypto, this particular part. But guys, it is used all over by corporations, authorities, by anybody who wants to push this to you, push their message, push what they want you to think, what, you, what they want you to buy. And in this case, it is the investment, it is the crypto sales, and they're using every tactic I can see. Does that make sense? So I'm gonna leave you with the slides. I really hope you've all enjoyed this vid. I've put as much details in it as possible. Please send me your comments on this. Please share this out. And I really do appreciate you all. And thank you all for watching this. And a big thank you again to all of the community members at Open Media One on Telegram, all of the subscribers here, all of the members, teams, channel owners, all on Telegram. And to all of the people who kept reminding me about doing this because you all wanted to see it. Thank you very much, everyone.